Hey, and welcome to another episode of Digital Marketing Insights from B2B R&D. I am Ellen Williams, CEO and co-founder, joined here as always by Craig Yaris, COO and co-founder. Hey, Craig, how's all going with you this morning, Good. this afternoon, whatever time it is? <laughs> wow. All right. That's a great start because you said this morning and I'm like, wait, I was going to say good morning and then it's now it's afternoon. Good afternoon. Or good there morning, go. good evening to those of you joining us from the other side of the pond. Um, Very true. I'm covering all bases. Uh, anybody joining us on you know, the west coast, the left coast, it's morning. So I think true. I can Morning somewhere, I suppose. Yeah. Things are true marketer well. covering all bases. Yes, yes. <laughs> Things are going well here in sunny South Florida, although today it's a little overcast. It's been torrential raining. You guys got snow, but we get torrential rains and tornadoes. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't. You guys depression. meaning New York. Yes, you guys meaning New Which York. Is where I'm from. Yes. Right. Uh, so in our escapades today in digital marketing insights, we've decided to talk about the ever popular Martech. Um, and to start things off, I thought uh, best to define Martech. Um, and as you and I have chatted back and forth offline, um, you know, MarTech, uh, the small version of it is, uh, you know, marketing automation, MarTech, the actual technology and data ac acquisition. But, you know, what we're doing right now is a little bit of MarTech, right? Yeah, sure. I, I to, In my mind, it's anything marketing that uses a form of technology. Yeah. Yeah, let's draw that uh, wide net, cast that wide yeah. net. So we'll be talking about just about everything today. Yeah. Um, so where do you want to start with uh, with Martech? Um, how about how about um, Blab? You know, we okay. were on a Blab last night um, there. And, you know, the technology is um, it's a double edged sword right now. Um, but the technology definitely allows for um, one of the things that was being talked about a lot last night was content and good content and valuable content. So this type of technology really lends itself well. Yes. to good content when it works, which is the other side of the sword. And, you know, it, it's interesting you say that because I think even on the Blab last night, there were some technical difficulties. One of the guests or one of the hosts couldn't get on. I'm noticing now that audio and video may not be synced properly. Um, and I think that Blab is- like a you problem. <laughs> anyway, uh, but go ahead. That? And I think as Blab continues to grow and what I'm seeing exponentially and changing, and it seems like every time you log in, something is a little bit different and it's hard for people to keep up. It really is the changing. Yep. 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 And there's, there's the real beauty in, in MarTech, right? Because geez, <laughs> 99% of them, I, I can't, and I can't even list what the 1% would be. 99% of MarTech is online. It's software as a service. It's a SaaS, right? Yeah. So lab, um, any kind of marketing automation or CRM system, you know, if we really get technical with it, it's all in the cloud, as they say, right? Yeah. And so every social um, network, every tool we use to connect, it's all out there. Yep. And we're... When I was with Constant Contact uh, and we were doing seminars, I used to tell people, you know, so Constant Contact is a SaaS, so software as a service, it resides right. online. And the the great news is, it's got good and bad news, right? The, the great news is that it can update, you know, when they come up with a great idea, they can update it and, and push it out. And now you've got this new function. And the bad news is, when they've got a great idea, they can push it out. Now you've got this new function, right? It's it's really how you look at it. You you know when when all of these platforms change, um, and there's always something going going on almost weekly. Uh, it's the intention of being a, a great new tool, something you can do that you couldn't do before. But the downside is when you log in, it looks nothing like it did yesterday. And, you know, now there's a learning curve where you're not expecting one. But not only that, um, things get just the addition of a quick, new and bright, shiny toy, things get more complicated. 
So when what you were able to do was just sort of rote memorization, all of a sudden it's like, well, now I have to think about what it is I wanted to do. I was actually, if you want to really um, micro define MarTech, I guess, I was looking at an app the other day for my iPhone, app reviews. And one of the, it's a free app. I don't recall what it was um, called, but the reviews are, you keep adding all these tools for free. Thank you but I can no longer use the product, the program, because it's become too complicated. So mm -hmm. in an effort to give value, because the app is free, there was no in-app purchase, uh, you know, that sort of stopped me from even using it. I don't want complicated, and I don't want something that's going to start complicated and get more complicated as the day goes on. So I think companies need to think about that very carefully when they're updating and changing and I know it's we want to see those things we want to see companies I like seeing that blab is really proactive in talking to their community but it just it, it does seem to sometimes it gets you a little frustrated it can definitely be frustrating when you're used to using a tool uh, especially when it's uh, marketing and uh, especially for small businesses who yeah who set aside time okay you know again referencing constant contact i gotta get my newsletter out i gotta get my email out and they sit down and they know it takes x amount of time and all of a sudden that function they needed to use isn't quite where it was before so there's definitely um in a in a, an effort to not be more complex you know sometimes there's been uh, a simplification of the user interface as well. Uh, yep. And that itself can make it more complex because where it was isn't where it is now. I mean, this isn't specific to MarTech, it's technology in general, but do you remember sure. when Microsoft Office came out with the ribbon? Yes. You know, huge. People, we, people, freaked people freaked out because they couldn't find what they normally had. And then we all sort of figured out, okay, you know, I have to deal. And then when you yep. did, you realized there was some logic to it. And now, you know, it's so better. It's so much better organized. And I think, um, you know, a lot of the marketing automation, CRM, SASs, you know, years ago, there were only a few to choose from. And in the last four to five years, the number of tools that are available are is just exploding. It, it and really what used, yeah, what used to be, well, it's, it's not proven so I won't go with it just doesn't seem to fly anymore sometimes it's well this is the latest greatest I want to try it right um, so you you wind up with more tech type products launching with maybe limited functionality just to get the ball rolling and to get themselves into the market yep. and then functionality that you would expect to see from you know because you're comparing it to those that have been around for years um start to sort of get added in drips and drabs so it's a little exciting to see oh great now it does this um but it's a never-ending learning curve and i think that's just just technology in general these days i i completely agree but my question then becomes do companies make a mistake by doing what you said? Do they make a mistake by saying, okay, you know what, let's rush to market. And I know people like Guy Kawasaki in his Art of the Start book has said, basically, get it out there. Um, don't wait till it's perfect, it never will be. Right. But if you rush it to market and you get it out there and you're competing, go with um, a CRM program. Uh, you know, So if you've got some of the features that people want just to get it out there, I'm going to try it and maybe jump ship very quickly because it doesn't do what I expected it to do. So I think there's that, it's a very fine line these new companies have, and I'm not sure how to straddle it. You know, I'm not sure how they decide we've got enough functionality, let's throw it out there, even though we know nobody will be happy with it. Well, that's the key. It's not that nobody will be happy with it. It's that um potentially those who have a deeper knowledge of what a product like that should in, in in you know offer might be a little disappointed but if you're launching a new product and you know <laughs> you need to go to market there needs to be a point where you go to market with the product right you know especially programmers they'll, they'll just sit forever um 
who is your market? And if it's people new to the software you're offering, then maybe, you know, smaller in the beginning is better because they're, number one, they don't know what they're missing. Uh, and number two, they will get uh, a good knowledge of the product as is, and as new things come, although it's a forever learning curve, there are small little learning curves. I only needed to learn one new thing today, and I only learned needed to learn five to get the product to work, as opposed to a product that, you know, if we're talking CRM, you look at something like Salesforce, when you, you, when you do the free trial of Salesforce, they give you as much as they possibly can, which uh -huh. if you don't know what to look for, can be extremely overwhelming. That's true. That's true. It, it definitely by going the other route and saying, OK, we, we've gone out with the finished product and here it is and it's terrific. And here's a free trial of everything. Um, it becomes, you know, the other side. And I think you also run into issues when they do that with, OK, what do I get? What don't I get now that my free trial ended? All of a sudden I have such limited functionality that now I've spent all this time. I have to jump to something else. Yep. Yep. So the tools that are out there, uh, you know, for all aspects of marketing, the more tech uh, group of tools definitely, you know, have that range between um, throwing everything at you and being in some ways very complicated, although very full featured uh, and other tools being, you know, maybe oversimplified mm -hmm. where if you read it, really get a good handle on it over time, um, you're going to be yearning for more and right. and, it's, and it's a give and take you know a lot of times pricing uh has to do with that as well um so if you're looking for something affordable or or low cost you're going to wind up with something that's uh maybe less full featured but but not always i mean we've been playing with uh um, modic which is right. a, a marketing automation product that um, ha is very full featured. It really yeah. has everything necessary from start to finish. Um, it's it's slightly complicated, which I think is just inherent to marketing automation. Um, but you know, it's, it's parts of it are falling short as well. So you've got both in one, right? You've got complicated <laughs> and and too simple. Um, so uh, and you know that just may be the case for for a small business marketing automation right now. Um, as the the SaaS's or the software as a service companies are, are trying to figure out exactly what to deliver, uh, and the people using it are trying to figure out exactly you know the best way to create a campaign. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure out what to deliver and who to deliver it to. Who is the target market for Modic versus Marketo and Infusionsoft? Is if the markets for Modic are the same as Infusionsoft? I think they've got to uh, spend some time because Infusionsoft, while it's, you know, I, I've heard it labeled Confusionsoft, although I never, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I've never found that when I had used it. It seemed to work and just took time. Whereas Modic, I, I find to be a little bit more confusing and a little bit less featured than something like Infusionsoft. Granted, we're talking about a huge spread in costs. Yeah, um, and I think uh, well, I think Infusionsoft has a, a more substantial CRM element to it than uh, Modic does from from okay. the little yeah. I, I've seen of both at this point. Um, and and I've never heard it called Confusionsoft, and and I would suspect it's it's I would suspect it's more the user than the product. I'm um, not saying that. you know marketing automation in itself is um, a multi step. Uh, yes. Martech, you know, a function of Martech, and, and it's not—it's not like email. Well, email marketing isn't necess shouldn't be a one-step process, but an email marketing campaign is just that. It's it's email marketing, and you, and you do you do develop the campaign, and it's a, it could be a drip campaign. But if you're not utilizing right. marketing automation along with it, where there's the infusion of huh, there you go infusion right infusion of data and the collection of data from a CRM, you know, a, a relatively strong CRM, then you're doing email marketing. And I think you know when yeah. Infusionsoft came along and said, okay, for small business. This is yes, we're a little expensive. And the reason they're expensive is because they want you to be successful. So they really um, have made an effort to hold your hand in the beginning, which which does cost a little bit of money. Um, 
I, which I think is a, a brilliant move for those I companies agree. that can afford it. You know, if you're going to spend that much money, you better be successful. And, and the fact that they help you do that is great. Um, but right. marketing automation in itself is, is, is so new to smaller businesses um, that it can be confusing and it can be complex no matter how simple, simple the, uh, the tool itself becomes. You're right, but I think the simpler the tool, the easier it is to handle the complexity. If I don't have to get bogged down in how to create the email or what you know the, the system for that will be for an automation campaign, it's one less thing I have to I have to get I have to struggle with. And Infusionsoft does do a great job in their onboarding. Um, it's expensive, but they really it's it's not just a you know a half hour. This is how to use the tool. There are right. I think there were eight sessions with their trainer creating campaigns that you would get to use later. So it wasn't just um, sort of in the air ideas. It wasn't just how to create a campaign. It's come up with what you want to do. Let's create the campaign together, create the emails and the triggers. And it's a really great system. Looking at Modic when they just throw you into it and it's okay, go for it. You're on your own. They have great videos. They really do. Well, there you go. So um, videos are, um, and, and Modic isn't alone there. You know, I've watched no, a lot of no. different videos for some of the, the, the marketing technology things we've brought on board at uh, B2B R&D. Um, but we, but in, in Modic's defense right now, it's free. Yes, you know, no, you're and, absolutely and, right. You know, absolutely. So it, not that you're thrown in it's that we we chose to do it and there is a, a lot of of great um places to go and and videos to watch um so before we we continue here we have uh, a nice um a group of people there are two seats open uh we welcome anyone to come on board it's an open conversation uh digital marketing insights we're talking about uh marketing technology otherwise known as martech which we defined earlier earlier <laughs> Yes, there is an R in that one. Um, uh, as basically any technology you're using to do your marketing, so everything from you know the lab that you're you're in now to all the social media platforms to actual tools. Uh, we started with marketing automation and CRM, but plenty other tools are out there. Um, I don't. I mean, Hootsuite is. I don't. I don't know if I. I guess I'd call it marketing automation, but yeah. really not full mar blown marketing automation. I mean, it's, it's different. It, so it's different. anyone, anyone yeah. welcome to, to, to step on in and grab a seat. Um, There's a, one of the tools that I use for um, some analytics is called community IT, And we talked a bit about it last week. Um, and in regards to marketing automation, they do have the ability to set up campaigns. The, and I'm sure you've seen them, insights provided by IT on Twitter or wherever else. And it's done automatically. And they thank followers. They, um, I'm trying to think what else they can, you know, the highly engaged followers. So that is marketing automation. Uh, the question comes in, is it good marketing automation? Does any of it work? Um, that's an excellent question question asked on the side chat there is, does any of it work? Now, that's a really broad question because if you're talking <laughs> marketing automation in regards to email and campaigns, yes, I believe it does very well. If you talk about the campaigns with IT, the thank you campaigns, I don't encourage those. Uh, so, see. <laughs> I, I disagree. Uh, okay. I, I, I think marketing, I think marketing automation absolutely works for a couple different reasons, but uh, I will put the caveat that you can't rely exclusively on the automation. You still have to be present in the communities yeah. that you've chosen to be in, the, the platforms that you're using. You can't, you can't quote unquote phone it all in, right? So marketing automation can be very, very useful when uh, you have limited time. It's a great way to manage your time more effectively um, mm -hmm. when you're able to build the marketing automation tool, um, build triggers into the tool, 
where it can do some of the thinking for you. And what I mean by that is it's not going to say anything you don't want to say. So the create the creation of the content is still at the hands of a human being. And the way in which we want it to work is still at the hands of a human being. But if I can't be um, on those platforms all the time, a level of automation um, allows me to maintain an active profile uh, and at least launch the beginning of the engagement. And I, th I think the thank you posts have value. Um, you know, people, it, it starts the ball rolling. I, I agree that thank you posts have value. Absolutely. Um, I disagree with the ability to use them automated all the time. Well, hello, Ms. Welcome Ranger. Welcome back. Hey. I was multitasking. My hair's wet. Ah. See, uh, she I'm went on, she went live with wet hair. I, I mean, yes, 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 not happening. I don't have curly hair. Mine would be totally straight. There you go. So, um, so, so welcome I, back. Then uh, I, I heard um, automation, and I had to jump in. Perfect. So, what what are your <laughs> what are your insights on uh, the world of marketing automation? So, I think automation to give you information, I like, but automation to do things with that, like you shouldn't totally let it go. In other words, you just don't know what, it needs to be real, it needs to be transparent. Um, I like the the kinds of things like automatic tweets that say, you know, nice to meet you, new follower kind of thing. Those don't bother me so much. Um, okay. but, but beyond that, I really, I really feel it should be used to bring you the information that, that you then look through and decide about. That's, yep. a, that's, that's a different, you know, totally um, a different track than we were talking about. You're, um, you're absolutely I right. I ran out and came back, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but the, no, um, that's exactly, you know, that's a great point. Um, automating content gathering, content curation is certainly helpful. Absolutely. So what were you guys talking about in terms of um, technology and automation? Well, the, the automation, and, and I totally agree with what you what you said. It's a great way to accumulate information, and the more information you have about the people in your network, um, the better you're going to be able to communicate to them. Um, but I think not not using automation exclusively. You know, you definitely have to be present, and you said transparent, and it has to be real. But I think as long as you've written the content that way, and you can develop triggers, so if if you're gathering information about someone and you've gotten a piece of information that uh, you're able to enter in your system and it triggers content that you know is going to be a good match for that piece of information, having that go out automatically and not have to think about it every time uh, it can be really valuable when you know you're making that right match. I That's agree. Similar to, uh, similar to something like Buffer, if you think about it. Um, Although you have to find the information, Buffer can automate the posting of it based upon the either you know their schedule or the schedule you set, which does give you, like you said before, Alan, that presence on any network without actually being there, um, and, and it does it does afford you that consistent connection. I agree, Craig. It fills in the gaps. Yeah. Yeah. My, I, I, so do you, what tools do you them. use, Beth? Pardon me? What tools do you use? Ah, those are my secrets. Ah, ah okay. I do, like, I do like Buffer for some things because if, say, like I'm reading on the train and I see an article, oh, wow, sure. that people want to share that with people, but I don't want to log in and try to deal with the tools I normally do, I can just throw it in there and then it can get shared at a later point. Um, I use so many tools. I wish there was one that would do everything I want, but there isn't. Right. So right. it's, uh, yeah. And I, I'm always, I have bright, shiny object syndrome when it comes to tools. Oh, yeah. So let me throw one at you. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. There's, there's a relatively new one called Rock the Deadline. Ooh. Right. Um, and it's. Rock, yeah, rock the deadline, and it's it's pretty interesting. There's a free version and a paid version, of course, and it's it's a content curation, but at the same time, it connect it's it connects with your um, 
it connects with your social media where you can create the post right there too. So mm -hmm. you, you don't necessarily just have to take the headline, you know, a lot of, if, when you find a great piece of content, they'll have the social media share there and they sort of create that post for you. Um, at Rock the Deadline, you have more, you, you can control what you post and when you post uh, uh, and it's, and you can schedule it. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. It's, um, it's, curates from a lot of different sources you can do it by topic so they're sort of going out and looking on your behalf as opposed to um you uh picking the places you want the product to filter from i've experimented with similar tools um right relevance and um oh God, what are they? even even the tools within hootsuite which i don't think do a very good job um but right relevance sometimes it i think it depends on the topics um, but then if you share right from their thing, you're not, sh it seems like you're not sharing from the original source. You're sharing from right relevance. So it's like a step. Right. Okay. And, and that's right. Yeah. It's, it's, it'll keep the, well, rock the deadline will keep the link obviously. So it'll go back to the original content, but, um, but it's, yeah, it's going to be shared through the, right. the tool you're using. Yeah. Do you know, um, in your experience, Beth, are there any issues with the social media platforms when you utilize a tool like that? Because I know they're looking for, you know, more native content. You'd be yeah. sitting at, you know, at your uh, at your account rather than automating it. It it does seem like they like you to be right in there. They want you using their platform, not a third party platform. But the reality is, how much time do you have in a day? And you have to balance balance that with with what you're going to get. So if you're already, for instance, boosting a post um, in Facebook, then it doesn't matter if it's coming from a third party tool. Um, you know, like, a, yeah. Well, Facebook's, Facebook's been very clear that videos posted directly on their site, native videos will do better. I, I mean, they, they haven't hid that fact. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to videos posted to YouTube and shared, although they do have a size, um, limit. So for instance, our Blab videos have to go to YouTube first. They can't go natively to Facebook. Yeah. Uh, which sort of puts us on the, you know, that double edged sword. So we had a question on the side. Um, has anyone used Edgar? <laughs> I've um, never heard of Edgar. I'm on their mailing list, but I've never done be I must have heard of it, looked at it, but I've never touched it. All right, so there, there you have a resounding no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I just pulled it up in a browser window, um, and it looks like it's similar to the other tools. You know what? Now that you say that, I've been on their mailing list too. I recognize <laughs> the little octopus, if you were. I, I think it's an octopus. Is um, it purple? No, not on the website. It's sort of like turquoisey. Okay. And tur turquoise is a color. <laughs> um, but I think here's the problem. Here's the problem you'll have with Edgar not ever having used it. Uh, $49 a month versus giving Hootsuite a try at free. Uh, I, I think that's a, a high barrier to entry for a tool that may or may not do something very similar. And then we go back to what we were saying earlier about the functionality, the complexity. Sure. You know, what do these, what is the smart tech, what do these tools have to offer? Um, and at what price? You know, an and, easy and comparison fact, we had was was free versus, you know, Infusionsoft or Salesforce. But when you're not even quite sure, it's, it's tough to jump in with a fee like that. And Edgar actually only connects with Facebook, Facebook personal, business pages, groups, Twitter, and LinkedIn profiles and pages. So as opposed to uh, Hootsuite, which I believe can connect to Google+, Plus, uh, Instagram, I believe. I don't know about Pinterest because I've never used it. Hootsuite that. connects with Instagram? I thought nothing connected with Instagram. I thought it did. I can go which check. I thought, they had, I, I thought Instagram was one of those platforms that said... Uh, you know, no, it, that it has Hootsuite to be local. No, nope, Hootsuite will connect to Instagram. Well, there you, you know, know. I, you that's said what I thought. Made me think about the sort of usability of all these different tools. When I first was looking for a CRM system, 
I, I checked out all different ones. I knew I wanted it to have an app. So I started with those. And what I have never been able to figure out is if I don't like a tool, is it because of the tool itself, the way I've set it up, or that I just don't want, you know, it's not the right tool for me. It may be very good for other people. But so sometimes it's hard to know, is it the way, is it because it forces me to use their system and their thinking versus that I can alter it and make it work the way I like. Interesting. You might have uh, the the price point might give you that you know the the there's yeah. definitely going to be less customization and functionality like that in a in a um, a smaller priced one. I mean I've used everything from I was I've been certified in Sage CRM uh, which you know is a server based product and uh, and I've used Salesforce and and right now for B two B R and D we're using Insightly. Um, I used to use Zoho and they they all have multiple. Um, you know, variations of functionality and price. Um, but I, th I think what you're saying is, is the old, you know, just CRM adoption is just, it's like the, the ugly stepchild. It's so hard, you know, no one, no, no one creative. And I've worked with a lot of people on CRM and the creative types as we all are, um, they, you just balk, you balk at some of that structure. I, my background is, um, is in bookkeeping and accounting. So I am data driven and, and more structured. Um, although I love marketing as well. So I, I gravitate to that kind of thing. Um, but, but, um, many marketers don't and even salespeople don't. So I, I think you're, you're part of that group of, uh, I, I get it. I see where it could be useful, but I just don't want that kind of, you know, like you said, you're changing the way you're thinking based on the structure that was designed. Good. Hello, well, Melanie. Nice to see hi, you. Melanie. Hey, hey. Hello. But Ellen, that's the exact problem I've had with our CRM. Is I, have I know. To I didn't want to out you. <laughs> I, I don't mind. I am, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. <laughs> you know, it's changing my thinking to work within this. Now, you've got the CRM background. So for you, it wasn't an issue. But I've got to change my thinking and the, my the way I do things to conform to the CRM. So it does, it, it is difficult, but you know, thankfully I've got, you know, I've got you to yell at me on, you know, how to use it better you mean and, and to coax assist me. Assist you and coach you. Yeah, 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 I like that better. Yeah. <laughs> We're partners, I could say no. Have you checked out Pipeliner? You know, we, we, we looked at a bunch of different things and, and Pipeliner was recommended to us after we had settled on Insightly. And at that point, I was sort of just tired of, of looking. <laughs> and one thing, you know, I mean, because there's so many out there, there are yeah. a lot of CRM and they're all really in the same kind of bucket. And there's yeah. one or two things that, that make them, you know, different from each other. The one thing that um, led us to Insightly and convinced us to stay um, and this was at Craig's prompting was the need for project management mm -hmm. and CRMs don't always have project management project. And, and that's another whole, you know, piece of technology <laughs> that could be a full time job. But luckily, the way they've included it, um, it's, it's very low impact, but it allows us to create projects where other systems we would have had to maybe fudge the opportunities section to, to right. use a little differently. Yeah. So the fact that we have the contacts, the opportunities, the tasks, the, all the CRM stuff and the project and management project. within yeah. one tool that does have the app. So everything's, you know, mobile with us was the deciding factor. Although I have to say, you know, I find Insightly a little bit limiting, um, oh, sure. but a as we've been using it, they have increased their functionality as we were talking earlier, you know, newer to market and lower end products are, are gonna grow in functionality. So I'm, I'm happy to see um, more things that I can customize. Cause I, I sort of, you know, I need my data fix. Yeah. So. <laughs> And, and you know it's interesting with Insightly. Um, I, I've I've been a reluctant. You know, I I will say that you know I've been a reluctant user. I ha I am. I admit that.
But the more you use it and the more you make that effort, I do feel like it pays off in the end. Instead of jumping into, you know, I was uh, on the road and Ellen and I were talking. She said, okay, you have to do this. And I was pulled over. <laughs> so I was parked. And I said, okay, you know, I'll pull up the, I, you know, I pulled up the Insightly app while on the phone and entered a task, you know, to, or whatever, to a, a task to my to-do list right there and was able to come back to the office and say, okay, it's now done. And I get the email reminders. I, you know, it just, you have to be willing to put in the time. Yeah. Like you, any you habit, do. you have to develop the habit. I was going to say, it sounds just like using social media, right? I don't get it. I don't get it. And all of a sudden, oh, I get it. You know, yep. it's, right? It's, just, it's the same. Any any new MarTech, any new technology, any new way to do things. I mean, like we said earlier, we're starting to use Modic. And, uh, you know, it's it's you know, it's a process. And I, you know, I, I said this last week. I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to do it next week. I'm going to write a blog post that says, you know, start your marketing automation with a paper and pencil. You know, because you really have to draw it out and understand every phase of it and then go back and put the pieces in the system. Because yeah. at the end, at the end of a good uh, a marketing automation product is the workflow. And the only way to get the workflow to work is if you have all the pieces developed, yep. Yep. you know, so um, so and, that's been the process. And speaking of blogging, Ellen, if you if you're a user of WordPress you know, a self-hosted site like WordPress.org. I don't think it works on WordPress.com, but you can schedule, you can write your blog posts ahead of time and schedule them to go out. Mm -hmm. So let's say you devote uh, two hours of just writing and whatever, you know, you get done, then you can schedule that. Uh, so for the, for your writings that are evergreen, let's say you already are writing something about, um, summer break maybe you're revamping an old article or something you're just sprucing it up and they're going to repurpose it later you know that that's a great thing to free up your time as well um and i i enjoy scheduling yeah, them if ahead I could of time plan ahead my blogs that would be awesome. yeah i know right but <laughs> <laughs> really melanie what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> we, well, I, you know, I, I, we spent a lot of time together. I think you would know us by now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just work in chunks of time. I guess I, the chunks of time is, you know, I, I don't try to put in twenty minutes here or half hour there. I do it in chunks, so that because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm chunky like that. <laughs> it worked working, well, you know, working in chunks helps me to keep keep current and stay ahead at the same time because yeah. then i can take a day off anytime i want you know take a day off also i would say yeah yeah well you know <laughs> yeah because it's like a work like you know six days a week but there's a time where i want to be unplugged one whole day and huh. uh just one whole day unplugged I would I would also think a bigger chunk of time would keep the creative juices flowing. I know, you know, and, and I think this is true of anyone, uh, any writer, when when you're on a roll, you're on a roll and it could be for an hour or two hours before you even look up. So if you, I think, you know, if, if you're that kind of writer and you know you've got a two hour block, you know, you might be able to at least um, get some ideas down and, and get them developed to the point where when you go back to them, it's a lot, for me, it's a lot easier to edit than to look at a blank screen, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. But I like the automation. So it's even, even MarTech in the world of, uh, of blogging yeah. uh, to get that, get them done and scheduled ahead of time. And, and, and I there's, could, there's one place you don't have to be, you don't have to be there, right? On your own blog. It can, right. it can just post on your behalf. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to ask, uh, we asked this last night at, at a different blog. Uh, a blab, sorry. Um, what about uh, Triber? Right, we're we're looking to start to promote our blog. Yeah. I think I picked. I found a PDF which I'm starting to think might have been really old, uh, with advice about marketing a a, a blog because some of the links are like non-existent anymore. But a lot of the idea, a lot of the ideas are very um, relevant. And uh, this is the first time I've ever had to really market 
uh, a blog. And so we, we I stumbled on Triber, which is not a, a new uh, platform, but we have yet to find someone who's sort of knowledgeable enough to say yes, no, maybe. So right. I'll throw it out to the two of you. Any uh, Any experience with it? I started it, but then when I realized it's just kind of like another closed garden to me. I mean, you, you, you'll you have the, uh, you know, you're developing your tribe and then it just kind of stays there where it's, to me, it's more of a relationship building kind of thing. And you hope that they'll share your stuff out. Right. But uh, so I, you know, maybe I didn't give it long enough hmm. to really absorb it. But those, those who I know, who um, have, they eventually just whittle away, uh, yeah. you know, they just forget it after a while because the relationships they did develop were not, uh, you know, they're just relationships. They're, they're, they're not going to be any future customers. It just depends what your purpose is. Okay. You know, if you're seeking like-minded relationships just to uh, stay on top of maybe your the, the industry that you're in, mm -hmm. I think it's okay. But if your purpose is to uh, make a profitable endeavor at somewhere along the line, I don't think, I haven't seen it work like that. What do you think, Beth? So I haven't used it. I know people that do. I don't know if they still do. Uh, maybe maybe on your next uh, lab, you can get Dino to come on and talk about it. Hmm. Yeah, that's I, I had said that, that I really, I had reached out to a couple people to ask their opinion and um, had planned on reaching out to Dino also to get him to explain it a little bit better because I feel like that's a big hurdle they have. Um, and that may be a good idea. I may just reach out to him. That is a good and, idea. Uh, yeah. Well, just like the guys huh. from Black will come on periodically to people's labs and they I think they've done such a great job of explaining their thinking and, and yes. their path so people understand it. Yeah. No, I agree. That's very right. cool. I'm on, the, uh, on the side here, I don't want to let this go by. We had someone uh, in response to our um, previous conversation on tools and scheduling. Um, they posted a link schedule s c h e d u g r dot a m so schedule gram and this is for scheduling on instagram hmm. so i think I've apparently somebody had someone had also commented earlier on the side here that you can't post to instagram through hootsuite you can just manage it somehow or monitor it um hmm. not schedule right it's s c h s c h e d u gr.am gr. yep thank you thank you for schedule schedule gram uh, you know i have enough trouble with my accent trying to get words out really ellen you have an accent i hadn't noticed <laughs> <laughs> really oh my god i was joking no <laughs> actually I was, I was i was at an event recently and i just met this person and he said to me where are you from and i said you know I, do you mean originally and he goes <laughs> he, you know like well, that's an odd question i hadn't heard it in a long time and he goes he goes yeah where are you from and i said why he goes well you know i'm trying to i said why do i have an accent and he goes well i'm trying to figure out where you're from so i said to him just t tell me what you think and he goes well it sounds like um you know, a sounds like a little bit of Brooklyn and a little bit of Massachusetts, but not Boston. And I started laughing. And I said, I was, I grew up in Massachusetts and I've lived in Queens for 30 years. So they were very, everyone was like, yeah, everyone was, you know, kudos to him for, for nailing it. Yeah. Uh, but it, I, I, I have difficulties with, with the words, with the R's and the ones that sound like it's a Boston accent, but there wasn't an R there. So I did get it right. I get very confused. So how do you say water? Well, um, no, I've been in New York long enough. If you just hit me with one word, um, but things like meta, yeah. I, I have to think twice. Wait, did I say that right? Yes, the word is actually meta. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, now, now that you mentioned that, I, I've noticed a few times we've spoken, you say, yeah, no, that word needed the R. And yeah. I, I never knew <laughs> Uh, I worked with a girl from New York and uh, my when I was young, and I didn't understand when she said, uh, table number four needs water. 
And I said, I don't know what that is. And she reported me to management saying she's, she's making fun of me. And I'm like, I don't know what she's saying. I don't know what that is. And they're like, it's water. I'm like, well, she's not, she's saying water, like, <laughs> like W O R T E R. And my, oh my gosh, I was almost, I was almost fired over that. <laughs> my, um, my, my in-laws are from upstate New York, as is my wife. So, and I'm guaranteed that no one, none of them will see this, but you know, I went to school in upstate New York and they say crick and roof. Uh, and yeah. I remember sitting in a class and the professor was saying, we've got to go to the crick. And I'm sitting there going, what's a crick? He said crick, where the water is. I don't know what a crick is. So it's a good thing we're not able to post in accents, right? If yes. we have to, have to type all this stuff out. So there's a, there's an advantage to social media, right? Everyone's <laughs> understood. <laughs> yeah, just put one one way. That's the best way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I, I need to know what pillar is. Um, lighthouse um, pillow, the pillar. Okay. Uh, yeah. You listen, I, we could we could go down that road very quickly. My my uh, yeah, my yeah. my grandmother used to say Frigidaire. Oh, Frigidaire. that's because that's the name of it. I like know Frigidaire mm -hmm. was the brand, but it was, it was like Frigidaire. Kleenex. There was an R. You know, it's there is an R. You got <laughs> there is an R. Washington. Instead of Washington, <laughs> I can, okay. I'm gonna I, wash I'm my clothes. I'm gonna win this one. I did live in Brooklyn, and my neighbor's name was Antony. Antony. <laughs> Antony. Well, this <laughs> very quickly. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, that we're in this, on track. We're, we're in this regional world now. We're yes. global, and pretty soon yeah. we'll start yeah. thinking of. Um, you know, people talking in Italian and <laughs> German and everything else. So, you know what, I will, I will parlay this back into our topic of conversation um, that uh, one of the topics from last night's blab was the importance of content, not that it's a new idea, but it's certainly, you know, bubbling to the top yet again this year in 2016. Uh, and a lot of it is going to be video and podcasts. And so you are going to have the audio version of it. It's not just going to be, you know, what's going on in the world of text content anymore. Perfect. And uh, and so um, our and they they also talked about, you know, people being actual camera ready. You know, if you're um, utilizing maybe a um, a tech one of your tech technology people internally or uh, someone, as you suggested, bringing someone on board to talk about Triber. You want to have somebody who's um, going to be video, audio, ready to to do an interview, and and how do you handle that? So um, the accents and the you know vernacular and cultures and all that is is probably going to be much more pronounced now um, mm -hmm. in the world of content. But I but I think we're so much more willing to just go with it now. We yeah. we we're accepting of the fact that you know what okay, you're going to come here. on and. Wet hair, you know, and I would, I would never have pointed that out. In fact, I forgot about it. But you know, it's that kind of thing. That's just it doesn't matter anymore. In the blab last night, um, everybody had a, a fairly clear background, similar to you know Ellen and Melanie. Um, I've got a messy office. I just I, I can't help it. Yeah, um, but. It's just, you know, nobody looks at that anymore. If you were on the blab last week, and I'm totally going to do this, you know, there were certain things that were, you know, shown in Ellen's um, space. Okay, you, you, you're calling me out. Okay, you call, I, I can't believe you're doing it, but you are. Okay. So I, <laughs> I, I will, I will, I will fess up. I, I'm, her audio cut out. Yeah, that's, I'm, Ellen's I'm tree, my Ellen's living tree room. did it. Her, her did audio it. cut out just well, at the time she was fessing up. Somebody explain that to yeah. me. Seriously, I, I mean, is that just perfect? Am yeah, I still you, here? Yeah, you're, you're on audio. Okay, okay. so I had, to, I had to unplug a few things that messed things up. So I'm in, I'm sorry? There's a delay on your square did you, for me. Mine too, me okay. too, I told her. So I'm, so I'm in my living room. 
and normally you can see all of it and many of the blobs I go to like Melanie has a, a solid back wall so today I decided to do that and I put up a screen Ooh, I'm just behind jealous me I don't so that one. you can't so you can't see the, the this yeah. is the room that normally people see and I was like I'm not <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going down that road because my Christmas tree was up last week, and uh, I, I got quite I got quite the commentary on that. So I've I've now blocked the rest of my home from the world of blab forevermore. I, I'm actually I, 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 but I haven't you know, used it yet. I I, I jo I'm you know I'm teasing you, but I'm jealous because I wish you know I could have something that you didn't see. Don't look. Green screen. The map. <laughs> I, I know. I really. Well, I need to do something. Well, my background right here, I have a mm -hmm. lavender wall, which is not, you know, this is my office and I never painted it. This is just the way it came and lavender is not part of my branding. So I put up um, movable slat, wood slat boards and I did that for like two years. And then I, I got tired of that look because people are saying, when you wear beige, you you look like you're part of the wood because you know and I wanted I like the natural wood because that way you'd never see hair out of place because it blended in, and then I I just put a sheet over this my plat my slats are still back there if I want to go back to it but the sheets over it and I have it hooked on with binder clips and it helps um, absorb the sound wow. you know where nothing echoes because the more fabric you have around your room like I have a couch over there and some pillows i used to yeah. i used to have my under my desk a bunch of blankets to absorb the echo <laughs> wow. but um that's my secret i like it wow see, yeah i need to do something clips, did you see that video that's making its way yes. around facebook with all the binder clip tips I that <laughs> binder yes. Clip tips. yes yes that, it's awesome, awesome. I, I i tried it though and it didn't work on one of the things i wanted to do Aww. I'm going to have to find that one. Yeah, it's a great video. So, yes, back. So interesting, in, interesting, yeah, interestingly, um, you know, when we look at something like Blab and, and video content moving forward and there's, uh, you know, I wouldn't call it a, a, a an argument, but certainly a discussion on the, the production value, right? And I opted to be more professional and, and put a background. Um, and I was telling Craig the difference between him getting ready is, you know, putting a shirt on and turning his camera on and me, it's taking a shower, doing my hair, doing my makeup. Melanie, you topped me. Holy moly. <laughs> You've got clips <laughs> well, and plus, pillows. And, yeah. But, but, I but mean, the, really. The, the, end result, the end result over time is going to be, you know, you can have both. You can be professional and still be authentic. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to expose, you know, and this is the, the conversation on social media too, how much of my private life needs to be exposed. And, and I decided that I didn't need it exposed anymore. And so I took the, the, the move to make it right. a, a solid background. Well, plus when I do, when I do videos, this solid background works better when I put graphics on top of it. When I put graphics on top of the wood, you know, it broke up the wood a little bit if I was going to zoom in a picture or text. Gotcha. But the solid background even looks better because it's just a neutral, neutral color. Mm -hmm. And yep. neutrals are tans, blues, grays, and, you know, blacks and whites, nothing like a, and that's why the green screen works when you, cause we don't have a lot of green. So that's why it, you have to have a green screen if you want to put that, you know, you're standing outside the volcano's edge, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> as you're filming. But let me ask you this, Ellen, based upon what you had said, um, and of course, you know, Beth, Melanie, and anybody on the chat, is it less professional if you see my, I don't know if you can see my enterprise. I have a Lego enter, it's not Lego. It's <laughs> I have a leg a mega box enterprise over here i have you know a bunch of other you can't other... see it, can't I, see I it. Just... you look like you're in an office which i think is is okay i mean and i think beth is fine too you know that but um but for me like i said i'm 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 sure. two feet from the wall in front of me i face the wall so i have the whole yeah. room my whole living room is behind me and it was you know, there was the fan above my head doing weird things. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what gonna do? Plus, I think it's what your audience will bear. 
You know, yeah. if, if you are uh, in front of an audience that expects, has different expectations from you, then do you listen to your audience or go with what you're comfortable with? So it has to be a mix of both. Yes. Yeah. I think so. You know, like Blab is more relaxed. Yes, that's for sure. But when I am on uh, Hangouts on Air, when we do our weekly show, you know, I that is branding and it is has to be the same look all the time. That's how people recognize, okay. you know, like, oh, there it is. There it yeah. is. You know, you know, I, I hear what you say when when you said Blab is more casual, but it, it doesn't always have to be. I mean, it's really yeah. the conversation that makes I mean, we definitely went off topic and it became more casual. And and, um, you know, Craig and I are partners and, and Melanie, you've been on many times and, and Beth is a, a long term uh, relationship that we have locally. And so Craig and I both uh, no Beth. So there was a, a a comfort level to the four of us today, although I don't know if Beth and Melanie had ever met. Um, no, I'm going to follow her right now. So, <laughs> so, there, you know, so there is that casual, but, you know, the conversations at Blab, at least the ones I've been attracted to, there are definitely personal topics that go on at Blab, but the business topics, you know, mm -hmm. have a high level of professionalism. The one last night was in incredibly high level of professionalism. Yeah. So um, as casual as it can get and, and you know, our, our very first Blab uh, topic, our topic was millennials and we had a young woman come on and she was That's in her right. kitchen and she ate cereal. And she told her dog to be quiet. And like, it was, we were just, you know, and, and here Craig and I are all, you know, like, okay, <laughs> you know, so I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I would ever go that casual. Um, but I think, I think it's, it's what you make it right. So if, if I, I don't want my living room as part of my brand, I'm not going to do that. So I think, yeah. yes, the platform le lends itself to being more casual because there's four of us mm -hmm. and there are unexpected people that show up, um, you know, that jump on board. And, and that's what really makes Blab interesting and, and, and fun. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think it I think it can still maintain that that branding along with it. I, I completely agree. agree. I, I, Plus, it's still all right. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, and we, are, we, are, we are just coming up to the top of the hour. We have two more minutes. Um, I, I apologize. I haven't really been watching the conversation on the right. Craig, did you notice anything that's uh, worthy of a, yeah. a shout out? We appreciated some of the links. Good. Go uh, for it. So, well, no, somebody. Um, okay, just a second. Uh, Richter has asked you to pronounce Anthony again. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, tap it into my professionalism yet again. Oh, yes. Um, but I think everything Antony. else has been Antony. But he wanted me to Antony. write it out for him, and I don't know how to spell Antony. Oh, that would be A N T H O N Y. Yeah, that's the that's the regular way. Yeah. Like my name's Melanie, but everybody I grew up with called me Mel Nee, M E L. And then like knee, like the joint between your, really? you know, calf and the male knee, like it's just too male knee. And uh, then when I grew up and I started to apply for jobs, I said, I better start saying my own name right. Because <laughs> I would say I'm male knee. Mm -hmm. And they go, male knee? I'm like, oh, I mean, Melanie. Mel -knee. Mel -knee. Yeah. Or, and then some people just called me Mel, which my mom did not like. She said, you're not a Melvin. And if anybody called my house, and said, is, is Mel there? She'd hang up on it. And then the next day at school, people say, why does your mom keep hanging up on me? It's like, because you asked for Mel probably, and she won't let me talk to anybody who calls me that. Yeah. Very strict. <laughs> I, th I think one of the, my worst examples is when I was um, doing social media presentations uh, years ago, and we were really simplify I was really trying to simplify it because people were like up in arms with social media okay you know so social let's talk about media what's media different types of media you know and and social brings it to the individual so I said you know I can post on social media but who am I I'm not Diane Sawyer <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I just, I died laugh and I'm like, who's Diane Sawyer? Uh, <laughs> so it, it slips out, it slips out every now and then. My kids love it, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, well, so, that's what keeps us all unique, you know, yeah, keeps, us, exactly. keeps us as a reminder that we all are not from the same places. And that's a good, and that's a wonderful thing. Yep. 
I yep, and bring different day. experiences to the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's one o'clock and we're wrapping up. And uh, thank you to Beth and Melanie who joined us live yeah, and on you. video. We don't always have uh, uh, a foursome, so uh, we're happy to have that today. Um, I am Ellen Williams, CEO of B2B R&D, always joined here by my cohort, uh, Craig Yaris, COO of B2B R&D. Every Friday at noon Eastern, we blab about digital marketing. It's always an open conversation. You're welcome to join us. Uh, please check out our website, uh, b number two b r a n d d dot com. We are a great resource for professional marketers, and we hope to see you all next week. Thanks again for joining us. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.